Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I have another scrapbook layout for you guys today. I am scrapbooking again the uh, more of our photos from our Disneyland 2012 trip. And I did a bunch of scrapbooking yesterday. I think I got three or four layouts done, so which is awesome because now I definitely have some videos that I can get ready for you guys. And I'm excited to get more of my Disney photos done. So um, I was thinking last night, now I got to decide which album I want to use. Or, Anyways, that's another story. So um, right now, again, I am using Echo Park's Magic and Wonder collection that I've been using. And I am scrapbooking these photos of the kids meeting Donald Duck. And they have this beautiful castle paper. And I love this background, this or this pattern paper, I guess it is. So I wanted to use a strip of the castles. A lot of the castles get covered up, but I don't care. It still turns out really cute. And then on the other side of this three by four sheet is a really pretty blue. And I know it's not the same blue as Donald Duck wears. Obviously, Donald Duck wears a lot darker color, but I don't care. It still goes really well. So I'm just trying to figure out which section of three by four cards I don't want to use or don't care about using, I guess. So I have learned in this past like two or three years, I think, um, I have learned not to save pattern paper that you think is pretty. I, I, I think I've just, I used to save it. Oh, I got to wait for that perfect layout. And I think a lot of us do that, but I've figured out that I'd rather get that paper used and in an album and on a beautiful layout rather than sitting on my shelf never used um, so I don't save paper anymore so if there's like that one side I was thinking oh do I use the 30 by 4 cards or do I use the blue paper I just went ahead and used the blue paper because there will always be more pretty paper there will always be more 3 by 4 cards so um, give it a try cut into that favorite paper that you've been saving for the perfect layout and you might hopefully it'll turn out great for you so I'm gonna go ahead you saw me inking all my edges with my black close to my heart ink like I like to do and I don't have a certain size that I cut any of these down basically I cut the cap the castles down to just fit the castle one row of castles in and this one is about maybe six inches maybe a little less I think but um, I didn't measure any of these. I kind of just cut a bunch of pieces and I'm going to glue them all down. I knew I wanted some vertical and some horizontal and I knew that I wanted this blue one to go. Um, I wanted it to be a little smaller and to go across as you can see the way I put it there. On the other side of the castle is that yellow white polka dot but it was too yellow with the other yellow on there. So um, I also cut down this strip of the polka dots but and I was thinking I would originally snug it along the edge of the yellow but when I put it down I kind of rather liked it going along the edge of the blue instead so you're gonna see me um, gluing this down and I'm gonna glue it along the edge of the blue and so it reaches almost the top and almost the bottom of the page but I am going to trim a little bit off of both the bottom and the top and then I'm just gonna ink that really quick and just to give a little bit more interest. Plus, I think the way it was kind of hard to get it glued down, so it wasn't exactly all the way. So I just cut it down to make it look like I did it on purpose. So this is the five by seven photo of the kids with Donald Duck. And I have three photos. I have the one where they're all looking at the camera, and then I have the other two that I cut down in the beginning to about three and a half by three and a half. But you'll see me, I'm gonna cut them down a little bit more, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. So I wanted to mount this photo on a pattern paper and I thought maybe red because there's a lot of red in the photo but not as much around the layout but it was just too um, bold. So I just took this kind of striped pattern paper um, out of the 6x6 book and I'm going to ink the edges of that and that is going to be my photo mat and when I put it on there it's a little bit hidden with all the other colors so I am going to mount that photo up with some foam tape. So here I am just adding a bunch of um, splatters around with my um, spray ink and um, what was it? Oh, so where I put the splatters, I kind of, I figured I would have a cluster in the bottom left and possibly the top left. And I wasn't sure where it would go on the right. So I just kind of added some splatters all over the page, but more in the bottom left and the top left. 
and then a little bit on the top right you can see there which that actually isn't where my other cluster goes but you'll see how that goes so here you can see me I'm adding some of the foam tape on the picture and I'm just trying playing around with where I wanted it to go and when I put this um, signature or autograph paper here I really liked the layout just like that but I knew I had these two other photos and I didn't want to just leave them off I don't it would have been fine if I would have left them off you don't need to use every photo to tell the story but I liked these photos and I didn't want to do a separate page obviously just for these two photos so I ended up just cutting them down quite a bit I think at this point maybe they're three by three um, and then when I put them down on the bottom right here it, that looked really good to me so they are gonna go there on the bottom right and I'm just making that um, photo in the middle there go slightly underneath the larger photo and then I'm gonna glue down the autograph and I'm just gonna barely tuck that underneath the photo the large photo also so that is how the pictures are going to go and that ends up covering up quite a bit of the castle but that's okay so while i was putting this layout together i have a scrap of this paper with the circles on it sitting in front of me you'll see me reach for it right there and the whole time i was thinking it would be fun to punch some of these circles out and do a layout um Oh, sorry, I got distracted by something. The news popped up, so I wanted to see. I don't usually watch the news, but this, you know, breaking news, you never know. Anyways, <clears throat> excuse me. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and punch, and I believe this is a one and one quarter circle punch. And I'm just punching out a random, the random circles. I have a, like a blue one and a couple yellows, a couple reds, just different colors. And I'm going to place them all along the left hand side here and some of them you, you could see were, were not full circles but um, I'm just going to tuck those in behind other things to make them look like they're coming out from behind that just gives a little more interest also so I'm going to go ahead and ink all the edges of these circles and then I'm going to start gluing them down um, I do start gluing them down and this top one was the white with the stars. I originally had it up there but when I glued it down I realized that it was the only one that was kind of white with colors and the other ones were more of a solid color like the blue, yellow, red. So I just traded it with the blue so it wouldn't have all of them together. I hope that makes sense. So I didn't pop any of the other ones up on foam tape, but I am going to add a couple other circle elements that will be popped up on foam tape. And this is a die cut piece that is a red circle with a lighter red heart in it. And I'm playing around with that. I did pop that one up on foam tape um, and I overlapped it on that blue circle in the top. And I'm going to look through and I'm going to find some other die cut pieces. Um, I have to say the die cut pieces that came in their pack were very large. Um, I actually prefer kind of the smaller die cut pieces. I feel like you can get more in your clusters with the smaller pieces, but um, that's okay. We'll make it work. So I took out this circle and I wondered if it would be good to have a circle in the right hand side somewhere to bring the circles over, but I don't believe I worry about it too much and I don't think I do. So this is another die cut that is yellow and it says worth the wait. And so I'm going to put it down below and that just adds another popped up circle um, down below and more attempts along with that whole left hand side. And this die cut piece, I'm going to go ahead and glue down over on the right hand side. And that's pretty much where my cluster on the right hand side is going to go. And um, I'm looking around because I put that red bow, um, I think these are what you'd call them epoxy stickers, I guess. But I thought the red bow really went with Donald Duck's big red bow. So I put that um, on the right hand side underneath his signature and I, I think it looks really cute there. And since I have that epoxy sticker over there, I am going to add a couple epoxy stars along the circles on the left later on, just to kind of add that epoxy texture more around the page. And then there was this um, sticker that said smile and it was blue and in the video I don't know if you can tell it doesn't stand out seem what I can see on the video 
doesn't seem to stand out as much here. It looks like it's very blended in, but in person it's not. It stands out definitely more. Um, when I do these voiceovers, the screen that I can see is like very tiny. It's like an eighth of the size of my laptop. And so sometimes I have to guess at what things say and what I can see. <laughs> I wish there was a way that I could do it while it was large on the screen, but um, I'm not that technical savvy and it's working for now, so I'm not going to mess with it. So I'm taking out this six by six sheet and I was thinking a few minutes ago, I tried this voiceover once and got interrupted a bunch of times. So I started it over, but when I was looking at this six by six sheet a few minutes ago, I thought it would be fun to take all these little squares and cut them out and try to make those into a layout. So I might try that in a little while here after I'm done with this voiceover. Um, I think that would maybe be cute. If you could get that to work out right, it might end up being really cute. So I'm gonna try that. So I just cut out a couple of the squares. The camera one went on the bottom left hand side. That's just a little cluster there. And then I tucked that other one on the right hand side um, behind this autograph and that die cut. And I'm adding a few just little die cut circle pieces. They're basically solid colors with a star of a different color in between, just to add a little bit more to the circle elements on the left hand side. And those aren't touching anything. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, I'm just kind of adding them around so they'll be interesting. And um, I'm going to play around. There was this castle. So this is the decorative Brad pack, but all the, the two rows on the right hand side of that pack are actually chipboard stickers. So I thought maybe I needed to bring some circles over to the right hand side because there's so many circles on the left, but I don't end up worrying about it in the end. Um, I think it just looks really cute the way it is. So I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Um, now I'm just playing around. I do have these very old epoxy, are these epoxy? I don't know. They're see-through Mickey heads and um, they're supposed to be sticky but if you can tell there it lost its sick stickiness completely which makes me a little worried for my past layouts I've used it on but if I have to go back and glue them I guess I have to go back and glue them but if you have anything like acrylic or epoxy anything that's see-through glossy accents works really well because it spreads underneath it really well and um, it dries this clear you know and so it looks like you didn't add any glue so mine got a little clogged um so i am i guess i could have cut this out for you but um i added one of those mickey heads into the top left hand and i just kind of hit it a little bit i like to take these mickey heads and kind of hide them behind other things you can see me doing it there on the right hand side and again this one lost its stickiness also so i'm going to add a little bit of glossy accents to it and uh, I'm just holding it down. And somebody told me one time, or I saw on a video on YouTube, that if you take your glossy accents and you kind of clear out the tube and kind of pound it down and clear it out, then it doesn't get as clogged. And sometimes that does really help, but sometimes it doesn't. So then I'm just taking another Mickey head and I added it to the bottom left hand corner and that is pretty much going to be my layout. So I have a couple close ups. The only thing you can see there, I didn't like the splatters behind that Mickey head, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. So I hope this inspires you to get some more Disney.